Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Zapier with your Bubble app. Zapier is a very powerful automation tool that connects hundreds of services and your Bubble app can be a part of it. So in this walkthrough, I'm going to have a Google Sheet trigger a Zap so that whenever a spreadsheet is updated, your Bubble app will receive the data and can do whatever you want from there. You can save the data, you can save the data, you can trigger an action. So let's see how this works. All right, so I've got several different tabs open here. Um, I've got my uh, Bubble App Editor and I'm opened up on my API workflow section. So I'll be able to add an endpoint here. Um, and then I've got my Zapier account open and I've got a spreadsheet here that I'm gonna use and uh, a section of the reference that I'm gonna point out in a second. So, so this is the Zap that I'm gonna create. When a row is added to the spreadsheet, it will trigger a Zap in Zapier, which will in turn, you know, the, the spreadsheet will send that data to Zapier and Zapier in turn will send that data to the Bubble app. And it'll actually send it to this API endpoint that we create. Um, this endpoint is, that's what these are for. You, you're listening for data. Um, and when you receive that data, you can trigger an action. From there, it just really works like any other workflow in your application. Um, what this technically is, it's a webhook. Um, your uh, Google spreadsheet is gonna send a webhook, um, which is an API call to Zapier, and Zapier will take that and uh, send, you know, send another webhook to your app. Uh, so we're just kind of creating this chain of events that can create like a really cool automated feature. So um, let me get some things set up here with this spreadsheet. I'm going to add some column headers, uh, one called event title and another one called event, uh, oh no, number of participants. So this is just a test um, data type that I've got here in this application called event. Uh, and we're just going to work with two fields. I mean, they're all going to work the same. So I'm just going to do two for this demonstration. I have a title field that's text and number of participants. That's a number. All right. So I have uh, my headers there and I'll add in one row first called, um, you know, uh, holiday 5K and number of participants, let's say 250. Okay. Now in my uh, API workflows area, I'm going to go ahead and create my endpoint. So I'll click on new API endpoint and this endpoint name will be updated hyphen sheet. You don't want to have any spaces here because this is actually part of a URL. This is going to be the very end of a URL, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, and I will uncheck this. I'm just going to run this without authentication. And uh, let's see here. So when this is called, this endpoint, we're gonna add an action. We want to create a new event. Create a new thing, new event. And I'm gonna set my fields for number of participants and the title. So where do I get the values uh, of these fields? Well, I need to add parameters to this endpoint. So this endpoint needs to know what data to expect and I can help it along by giving it some parameters so it knows what to look for. Uh, so I'm gonna create a parameter called a title, which is gonna be a text and a parameter for a uh, number. Uh, we'll call it participants, which will be a number. Okay, so that way Zapier knows kind of where to direct all of the data uh, when it's sending it to this endpoint here in our app, right? So when this is triggered, basically when it receives this data from Zapier, it's going to trigger this create a new event uh, action. Number of participants will equal the value of the participants parameter and title will equal the value of the title parameter. Right, so this is this is something that you can use in real life. Let's say your spreadsheet is actually a uh, uh, full of responses to a form. Okay, so you can have all your responses coming in here and have Zapier take those responses and trigger stuff in your app. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and create the Zap. I know we're kind of I'm jumping you know between these three tabs here, uh, which is typically how it goes when you're setting up something like this. You're kind of having everything everything needs to work together, so you're going to be flipping between them. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Zap, and I'm going to for the trigger I want to work with Google Sheets. So my trigger is going to be when there is a new spreadsheet row. Save and continue and I'll choose my Google account. And then I need to navigate to my actual spreadsheet inside my Google account, which is gonna be that one. And then the worksheet within the spreadsheet, which I only have one of, sheet one. So if you're not familiar with Google Sheets, 
uh, you can have multiple sheets down here. Under this Zapier demo, I just have this one sheet. You can add more by clicking that little plus sign and it would add a second sheet there. Okay, but I'm just working with sheet one. So we'll hit continue. Okay, and everything looks good. Uh, yeah, make sure that you have at least one sprite she wrote uh, created. Um, and you also have to make sure that you have headers there so that when it's pulling in the values, it's not pulling in your header values. So I've got my header in the first row and then uh, data in one row after that. So we'll fetch and continue so that it can look for it and kind of solidify your structure there. So that looks good. Continue. Now, uh, the next step is going to be the uh, sending of data from Zapier to your app. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a webhooks feature. Okay. Um, and a webhook is basically an API call uh, using a post method for that API call. So we're going to select post here. And then we basically need to, you know, tell Zapier how we want to structure the data we're receiving from the sheet so that we can send it in, you know, a specific way to bubble, which is also expecting, you know, very specific things, um, you know, these, these uh, parameters here. So uh, the first thing is we need to give Zapier an address where to send the data. And this is going to be in the form of a URL. So if you go to the bubble reference under the API section on the left here, and then under the introduction area, you can see the structure of a post uh, endpoint URL, right? So I'm going to copy this here and I'm copying it for the version test uh, version, the development version, because that's what I'm working with here. Uh, then I want to go to Zapier and paste that in there. And I'm just going to replace my own values for these placeholder values. So I'm going to enter in my bubble app domain, which is coaching sandbox.bubbleapps.io. If you have a custom domain, you would replace this whole thing with that. You know, maybe it's myapp.com, something like that. Um, version test, I'm going to leave that in there because that's the version I'm working with right now. Uh, do remember to come back and switch this to your live, you know, remove version test once you're on your live um, version of your app. And then the very end of this URL is the name of your endpoint, okay? So remember, we labeled this without spaces um, for our endpoint. This is actually part of the URL. So I've got updated hyphen sheet. To enter that updated hyphen sheet there. All right, the payload type is going to be JSON. Um, that's what Bubble is expecting. And then the data is going to be your parameters. So we basically want to connect what Bubble is expecting with what the spreadsheet is sending. All right, so that's actually where this is going to happen. So in Bubble, we've entered in a parameter for title and for participants. Okay, so I added another one by clicking that plus button there. Um, and then the value of the title parameter is going to be found here. I'm going to click on this um, insert field. And so this is pulling in my spreadsheet values. Uh, so for title, it's going to be this column there. And then for participants, it's going to be that one there. So now we've connected the two. Now Zapier knows uh, what it's looking for and then how, you know, where to route those values in terms of the parameters when it's sending it to all to bubble. Okay, uh, file is optional. We're not working with any files. You can leave this there. Um, and this is for the headers and basic author for auth authorizing your call. Um, I actually have my endpoint all open. It's all public. Uh, but if you wanted to send um, an API token, uh, you know, and you wanted to have this run with authentication, that's where you would enter this in the header area. So I'm going to hit continue and test this step. All right, so if we go to my data tab really quick here, just to keep an eye on the data that's coming in. So under my events table here, I have no events, okay? And the API endpoint is set up to create a new event with that data when it receives um, a webhook from Zapier. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my data here. This is blank. And let's go ahead and create and continue. Test successful. It's only successful if we have an event here and it looks like we do. Uh, let me kind of close this down. Title, let me open up my description field. Oh, what is it? My participants. My number of participants field, which is hiding there. I think I was blind, I couldn't see it. Okay, this stuff is all squished. Let me just move that 
over, but we can see the data there. All right, so we've got our first event. It pulled in the title and it pulled in the number of participants, which is great. All right, and then the last thing you need to do is just head over back to your Zapier setup, hit finish, uh, give it a name, and then turn your Zap on. And then depending on the plan with Zapier that you're on, uh, this will check for new updates in your Google Sheet every so often. There's a, you know, your plan dictates how often it'll check it. Um, the higher the paid plan, I believe, the more frequent you can run this. And once you do that, you're off. Uh, this will just happen automatically. So every time you add a new row here, it'll automatically trigger Zapier, which will automatically send that data to your endpoint, which will automatically create a new thing in your database. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know what you're interested in learning. Thanks so much for watching.